This is uh, day two, uh, day one. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, day one, 8.30, uh, scheduled day. And uh, we have now the talk from Mitch Altman, uh, make cool things with the microcontrollers. And uh, I've seen some things I do find really cool now. Have fun and give him a welcome. <laughs> Thanks, thanks for coming, everyone. Um, can everyone hear me okay? So, um, there's some info about me, and... I uh, have been doing a lot of stuff with microcontrollers for a long time. I came to uh, 23C3, and uh, Fubud out there had a little workshop where we're teaching people to solder, and that was just so much fun that I've been doing workshops at maker fairs and hacker conferences uh, and other conferences ever since, just the, all these workshops and even like little house parties, um, teaching people how to make cool things with microcontrollers, and it's, it's, it's so much fun to do this. Um, you get a whole bunch of people in a room building things, and it's like little kids playing with blocks. Everyone has smiles on their faces. And I'm going to be doing a workshop here, uh, probably later tonight after Lady Ada's talk, which is after mine. Um, and then the next day, the next day, the next day, either down in the hack space or uh, in the FUBUD area just by the stairs over here. So if anyone wants to learn to make cool things with microcontrollers, come on by. I got lots of parts, and you can be as happy as these folks. <laughs> And really, anyone can learn this stuff. Um, it's, it's not hard. And uh, no matter how much you learn, there's always more to learn, which is part of the fun of it. But just to make some cool things is really easy to start with. So uh, one of the main things with microcontrollers is the hardware for all of the simpler things is basically the same. You just change the firmware which is the controlling software, and you end up with something totally different. So here's three examples of something that I started with pretty much the same hardware um, and came up with something very different uh, hardware-wise and functionality-wise. So the brain machine, uh, if any of you were around at uh, Chaos Camp, you probably saw those, and this is what they look like. They blink lights and pulse sound at uh, brainwave frequencies, and your brain synchronizes to it, and you hallucinate really cool colors and patterns from your subconscious mind. People tend to ha like hallucinating, uh, so it's kind of fun. <laughs> and um, this trippy RGB light, um, just mixes colors to make this sort of little mood light. It's totally meaningless but fun. This bug bot, um, here's, he's crawled off of tables a lot, but uh, he still kind of does his thing. He eats light and he gets excited when he eats light and his tail spins around. And, uh, yeah. So um, then I have some other examples here. Um, this LED cube. At a uh, forming hack space in New York City, this is the first project uh, out of there. It's this little LED cube, a miniature version of what I saw at Chaos Camp uh, from Metal Lab. I don't know if you can see under this light, but it's, it just blinks lights in a 3D pattern. Uh, Life-changing uh, event, of course, but it's, it's fun. And then uh, I also hacked uh, TV Be Gone, which is this, and all of it came out of this kit here, which is um, a mini POV made by Lady Ada, who makes lots of cool kits to teach beginners and experts alike how to make cool things out of microcontrollers. This thing, um, there, there she is uh, waving it back and forth, and um, that's this thing here. So if you wave it, I don't know if you can see, but you can program it through this serial port um, any computer that has a serial port or a USB port with a USB to serial converter can program this chip. And it's, it's really um, super easy and fun to build. Just about anyone can do it, even if you've never soldered before. One of the cool things with this is it's open source. So everything's free and you can download it from the web, except for, of course, for the parts themselves, which are pretty cheap. Um, and since it's open source and all the info is online and there are cool workshops where people can teach you stuff, um, it's easy to hack. So you can hack any of those other projects that I, I showed you. Um, 
Yeah, so I'm going to talk mainly about this one, but I'll say a little bit also about a TV Be Gone kit, which came from uh, hacking this into a TV Be Gone. Oh, one thing, just to go back uh, to those other slides, look at the hardware of these things. You can see that all of them have this board on it. The hardware really is the same. Um, you can see the serial port on all of them, and maybe the chip, the bug bot, it's kind of hard to see because it's covered in a solar panel. But um, they're all hacked from that. So the brain machine, uh, I wrote an article in Make Magazine issue number 10, which came out this uh, summer, this past summer. And it's been way more popular than I thought. Uh, I had a, a lot of ideas about why that might be fun to do, and I guess it's resonated with a lot of people. And uh, it's, um, it's, well, it's, it's cool. Uh, later on, I've got a whole bunch of them if you want to try them out uh, for just for a few seconds or for a long time. Just find me. I'll have them at my workshop, and you can check it out. I've got a few pictures I'll show you of what people look like when they're wearing them, and you can be one of them. Um, but let me talk about brainwaves a little bit. Um, there's a whole spectrum of brainwaves that any person's brain, if they're alive, uh, emits. So, and they're somewhat arbitrarily, but somewhat uh, functionally, divided up into five bands. So the lowest ones, well, let's start with beta. Beta is um, what most healthy adults are emitting when they're awake and thinking. Like right now, you're listening to me. If you're not spacing out and daydreaming, like you, um, <laughs> then you're in beta waves. It's, that's when you're um, just sort of thinking about stuff, and not too deeply, but just paying attention. Then alpha waves is what happens if you're kind of like drifting off. And um, if you're going between awake and asleep, and I can't help but put a dig into TV, there's only one thing that has ever put people into alpha waves and only alpha waves in two million years, two million years of human existence on the planet, and that's TV. So alpha waves is associated with total passivity. Now, there's nothing wrong with alpha waves. We couldn't live without them. However, if you're only in alpha waves, then all of the crap that is being put in TV uh, programming and commercials goes right into your subconscious, so whether you're conscious of it or not. So, okay, uh, the next level down, lower frequencies, is theta waves, and if you're just doing theta, that means you're deep asleep. But if it's theta in conjunction with some other things, there's also different states of mind. And um, delta is the next one down, and that's like way down there. But it's interesting that when you're in a creative process, and that can be whatever realm you're in, if you're a software geek and you're just way into debugging or figuring out a new cool project, you'll be pulsing some delta waves, and there'll be theta, there'll be alpha, there'll be betas, all this stuff going on at once. And, um, or if you're a runner really in a groove, or if you're a fire and brimstone preacher preaching hellfire, you know, in a groove there. Uh, everyone in that groove has a pretty similar uh, brainwave pattern that you can measure with an electroencephalogram. Um, and I'll talk about more about that in a sec. Uh, another uh, state of mind that deals with all of these brainwave types is meditation, something I've been doing uh, pretty much all my life and get a lot of benefit from it, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to make the brain machine was to kind of trick people into trying it out. So I made it fun to try out. Um, yeah, the hallucination shit, uh, stuff. So uh, the next thing is gamma waves, and I, I don't use that in the brain machine because um, when you try to stimulate brains with gamma, people tend to get anxious, and there's already enough anxiety in our world already, so I figured I'll stay away from that until we learn more about it. Uh, there's not a whole lot known up in there. Um, so... Um, some of these slides are left over from my talk at the camp. Uh, I don't want to go over all of it because we don't have a whole lot of time, but basically, meditation, um, we can play with brainwave frequencies. The brain machine, let me back up a step. The brain machine plays brainwave frequencies into your brain, if you're wearing the brain machine, through these pulsing lights. 
and through this headphone jack into headphones. So these brainwave frequencies um, synchronize your brain to the frequencies that they're pulsing at. And it works on 90% of people who try it. The other 10% just don't like it. <laughs> so 90% um, is pretty good. That's better than most medications. Uh, <laughs> And so given that this works on a lot of people, we can give a brain a sequence to follow. And what I made for the brain machine is meditation sequence. So one of the rules with synchronizing a brain to external frequencies, which has a fancy name called entrainment, um, you start where the person's at and then bring them where they want to go. You cannot bring them where they don't want to go which is why the Secret Service of the U.S. and the Soviets dropped all of this research. And uh, so anyways, with meditation, you start with someone who's awake, so it's beta waves, and then you start adding a little bit of alpha, reduce the amplitude of the beta, hang out there for a while, and then go into theta, bring in some more sort of subconscious activity, and now you have a unique situation where you have some conscious activity with the beta, some subconscious activity with the theta and this alpha to kind of bridge it, so you can be more conscious of stuff which is normally subconscious, or so the theory goes. And then you start pulsing some delta to trigger off some creative thought, and hopefully you're connecting with some really cool stuff deep inside that doesn't normally come up, and you can do cool ideas, cool projects, whatever. It's all inside of you. Go in there, check it out, you'll like it. Uh, really briefly on the history of this, uh, there's a lot written about this, but uh, I'm just going to run through it. People have been doing uh, uh, altered states of consciousness ever since people have been bopping around. So one of the early ways that we still use is through trance dancing. Uh, and the drumming in uh, uh, older societies uh, is in alpha and theta wave frequencies, so that perhaps synchronizes people all in a group with this uh, context of all going to this cool place together, and it can get pretty high. Um, in um, the second century, uh, there's this guy, Ptolemy, who really loved it when he noticed through a spinning wheel some light shining through it, and he started hallucinating, and he wrote about that. And that's left down. It wasn't until the 1920s that we had a machine to actually measure brain waves, and people were into radio and all this stuff, and you could measure the emissions of a brain uh, with the invention of an electroencephalogram, EEG. And uh, this guy in the 30s was the first one to use it to measure humans' brain waves. And he actually used the frequencies to put people in a base. Um, set of frequencies so that he could do other things to, their, to the subjects with their permission um, to see what changes. Uh, and this guy's name is uh, W. Gray Walter, and incidentally, he did a lot of the early work in robotics. His main thing was trying to figure out what is a mind, and you know, how does it work? So he tried to build robots to model what he thought was the workings of a brain and see by building these robots, does it actually behave like an animal? And he found a lot of interesting correlations. Um, way interesting character, you can look him up. He's, a lot of books of his are still in print. Fascinating reading. Uh, in the 50s, there was this beat generation guy, friend of Jack Kerouac and all these other people, uh, 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 Burroughs and Ginsburg, et cetera. Uh, Brian Geisen, most people haven't heard of him, but he was behind the scenes in a lot of these characters and gave them a lot of the ideas that they became famous for. They, they ran in crews with him. One thing that he created was the Dream Machine, which is um, pictured there. It's got some cool-looking slots, and it, fits, it stands on a 78 RPM turntable and spins around, and you put a light bulb inside, and you sit down like these folks are doing with their eyes closed, and then they start tripping out on alpha waves. And uh, people have since changed it to 45 RPMs, because 78s are hard to come by, and uh, a friend of mine built it, and this was at a party of his. 
and uh, I had a bunch of brain machines there, and uh, so we had a, a dream machine, brain machine room for the party. That was tons of fun. Um, <laughs> So in the, in the 70s was the first time that there was a patent made with this kind of stuff. The first brain machine was made um, kind of like this, but it cost like a thousand dollars. Little chips that are cool like this didn't exist back then, and they were hard to, to program. They also didn't, um, it wasn't, not as much it was known about brain waves back then either. So like the dream machine is just alpha waves, the early brain machines were just alpha waves. Um, but you can do cooler things if you do things with all of the different ones. Um, in the 70s, also, there was a lot of research to see therapeutic value in trying to entrain brains, and they found some interesting results. Also, discos started purposely pulsing things at alpha waves to really, kind of like the early dances around the fire, uh, at the rituals, and uh, they stopped doing that because people who are epileptic uh, sometimes go into seizures. So um, that's one sort of caution with these things. If you're epileptic, you shouldn't really be around these kind of blinking lights. Um, but it's only a small percentage of epileptic people, and otherwise it's totally safe and totally fun. Um, yeah, and then it became really popular in, uh, in pop culture with this guy who wrote a book, uh, Mega Brain Power, uh, Michael Hutchison, and he made all these wild claims, and you know, some of it might be bogus, and some of it's kind of cool, but you can check that out for yourself. And uh, one thing also, some people uh, say that if you have ADHD, which is way overdiagnosed, um, it's um, hyperactive, like people who used to be called hyperactive, it's ADHD nowadays. Um, people who actually have this, uh, some people say that it makes them, their condition worsen. Other people say it helps it, but sort of a caution there. Um, and then I just put myself at the end of this. Uh, in Earlier this summer, I wrote this magazine article, and uh, I didn't really do anything too new. I just did it really cheap. These things exist uh, commercially, but for you know, a hundred to hundreds of dollars to thousands of dollars. And you know, this thing you can build for thirty dollars U.S., you know, twenty euros, whatever. And uh, and you can do it yourself. It's fun. And um, yeah, they're popular at parties. <laughs> um, so I mentioned this already. One of the things this uh, this microcontroller that I used is an AVR family microcontroller. I don't know what AVR even stands for, but uh, it's made by Atmel. And they're really cool uh, microcontrollers. There's a huge uh, open source community around the world that use these. And there are a lot of good reasons for that. They're kind of taking over what the PIC used to have in Parallax, which are popular, uh, other popular microcontrollers. And they're all good and they all have their disadvantages. The first time I ever used an AVR Atmel chip was for hacking the mini POV kit into this. And I fell in love with it. It is so easy to use. And like I said, it's open source. Everything to use it is free. There's a GNU C++ compiler. You just download it. There's tons of example software out there. You can just alter it a little bit uh, and make your own things. Um, there's a forum, a user forum called AVR Freaks, and there's people on there 24-7, every day, always, that would love nothing better than to answer your questions about an AVR chip. <laughs> it's true. Uh, the first time, uh, well, the magazine article was Becoming Due, and, of course, I procrastinate because I'm working on 50 billion projects at once and enjoying all of them, but it was time to, like, i got to finish this. The magazine article is due in a week. So um, I figured, well, maybe I should build one. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> so I, I did. <laughs> but there was a bug in the programmer, so I thought, and it was just, it worked fine if the brainwave wave sequence was only... Um, beta and then alpha and then theta, but then when I started adding others, it stopped working and I posted a question to AVR freaks at 11 p.m., um, 11 at night, and by 11.30, a half hour later, someone in Australia had answered a question enough so that I could 
fix the thing. I was pulling out what little hair I had left, and um, yeah, so I still have some hair as a result of that. Uh, it's it's a really great thing. So and there's a community of people all around on Lady Ada's website. Again, she's the one who makes this kid, and she's doing a talk after after mine in, in uh, Zal Ein, and um, uh, I can count to one in German. So uh, uh, she makes a lot of cool kits, including that one. And her she has a user forum on hers where there are a lot of people who communicate with each other to help each other make cool things out of these. Um, this thing, um, yeah, let me, let me play this. So uh, the brain machine works with pulsing lights at brainwave frequency and pulsing sound at brainwave frequencies. The brainwave frequencies are pretty much all below the range of human hearing. So you can't just pulse speakers at those frequencies. It's, it's kind of like loud clicks, it's kind of ugly, and it's more effective, though, if you use binaural beats. So, let me play, oh, I don't know if the sound works. We didn't test it out. Let's see if we get some sound here. Oh, there we go. So there's one tone. You can hear that. Now that is the bass tone that I'll play in one of these speakers. In the other speaker, I play a tone which is just a little bit different. It's a little higher. And if I play them both together, what happens is you perceive the difference between the two tones. So when I want to, excuse me, when I want to uh, entrain someone's brain to alpha, I'll blink these lights at alpha frequencies, which is 11 hertz, and uh, then I'll, p I'll have the bass tone and the offset tone uh, so that the difference is 11 hertz. And here's this will play first the bass tone, 200 hertz, then the other tone, the offset of 211, then you'll hear both together. Bass tone, offset. So you hear that? So that is uh, 11 hertz, and that's uh, a beat frequency. The interesting thing is that's a physical phenomenon. The binaural beat is a perceptual phenomena. There's no physical thing happening to make you perceive that wah, 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 wah. Um, it's all in your head. So the thing is, all of this is all in your head. Something is going on outside of us, but what is it? We try to put that together as best we can, but we don't understand that. We have a brain and we're trying to figure out the brain from our brain. It's not going to work, but we do the best we can, and we can have a lot of fun with it, and we can even call it fulfilling. So we might as well go for it. Um, when you do this with the headphones, the bass tone in one ear, the offset in the other, there's no beat frequencies, but we perceive the binaural beat. And that's uh, always going along with this brain machine with the frequency of the blinking lights. And it goes through a sequence uh, in this particular project as meditation. But this project is all open source, and you can hack the table, and I'll show you just really briefly here. Um, um, oh, it's just in your head. Um, here's a little diagram that I drew. I'm not that kind of a graphic designer, as you can tell, but... Um, you, oh. Are we stuck? Ah, there we go. Now, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I sub by the way, I submitted this to uh, Make Magazine, and of course they didn't print this, <laughs> and they came up with beautiful artwork in its stead, which is a testament to how great their art department is there. Um, but anyways, this is just all the various parts of um, what goes on with the brain machine. Um, the, the circuit board with all the electronics and um, programming port, uh, the power supply, speakers, the brain. And um, this is what I was getting to. So um, there's in the firmware, oh, by the way, for those who don't know, firmware is actually a technical term. It's the software that controls hardware directly, and there's no real hardcore term of what hard or a firmware is that can 
different people uh, define it differently, but that's how I define it. So it's between hardware. It's not actually hardware because hardware is, is this stuff. And it's not the software because people don't really interact with it. It's between them, so it's not hard, it's not soft, it's firm. And um, there you have it, it's called firmware. And my firmware is published, it's open source, and at the beginning of it is a table, which is a brainwave table, and that's got the sequence to um, uh, and train to, and I have the meditation sequence in there. And it's just a bunch of um, <clears throat> brainwave types and durations. And for, uh, just so it all fits into a, uh, a two-byte quantity, I have them in ten-thousandths of um, um, microseconds. So this is actually um, 60 seconds. And so this plays beta at 60 seconds, alpha at 10 seconds, and the table just continues down, and you can put whatever you want in there and, and play around with it. And a lot of people have been doing this. Since the magazine article was published, thousands of people have made this and have played around with it and come up with their own sequences. And uh, you can too, if you like. Um, I don't think I have time to go into the, the firmware too much. The firmware is actually very easy. It's just a loop that goes through that table and um, pulses the lights. It just pulses the out, um, one output pin for the lights. And uh, it, it uses an internal timer uh, for the bass tone out of one ear, another internal timer for the, base, or for the offset frequency for the other ear. It just goes through the table. Um, here's the hardware. And... Um, uh, how are we doing for time here? I don't have time to go through too much, but there's not a whole lot to go through. This is the microcontroller. That's the programming circuitry, just that serial port and a handful of parts. Um, some LEDs that are only used for testing. Um, this is a low-pass filter to round off a square wave coming out of the timers because square waves are kind of harsh on your ears. So it just rounds them off a little bit and it goes to the headphone jack and then just LEDs on a couple of output pins, and that's that. Um, and just to show you, the hardware for the Mini POV is almost exactly the same as this, and this is it as published on Lady Ada's website. If you blinked, you probably didn't even notice a change. Um, here's the brain machine, and here's the Mini POV. Very, very much the same, just uh, changed the, um, the two of them go to sound, two of the LEDs, rather than being over here, go to your eyeballs, and two of them go to a headphone jack, so there's sound instead of light. And uh, I'll just show you quickly, the, um, the trippy RGB light is almost the same hardware too. Instead of all red lights, we got a red, a green, and a blue, and I'm pulsing them with something called pulse width modulation, so I can fade them in and out at different rates to get different colors. Um, and here's the bug bot, that's the most complex one. It has uh, a couple of LEDs for his eyeballs on his antennae. And uh, then the motor is just another output pin, and it just puts current into the motor. And uh, I also use an input cell with uh, input pin uh, for a solar cell so I can detect when uh, he's seeing eating light. He likes eating light. And he gets excited when he eats light, I showed you that. So. Um, that's that one. Oops, I went too far. Um, the TV Be Gone is very much the same, too. Uh, it only has one output, and it's an infrared light, and I pulse that at infrared frequencies to turn off TVs, which are... It's, it's a really good thing to do. If you, if you haven't done it, try it. I think you'll like it. It'll give you much more time to build cool things with microcontrollers and have a life. So I, I recommend that. Um, uh, this uh, is a fake screen. It's just there. If I had a black box, which I originally had, and I, I'm like, turn it on, then people are like, what is he doing? Is he a terrorist? Um, that word is used a lot lately, if you've noticed. Uh, but if I put this little sticker on it, no one blinks. <laughs> so... Um, at workshops uh, over the summer and fall, I was having people build these along with whatever else they wanted to build hacked from the mini POV kit. Uh, but that grew into an actual TV Be Gone uh, kit. And I didn't bring one with me. Um, 
so I can't show it to you, but uh, I do, can't do have a picture. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, Lady Ada and me w got together to build this kit. It has four emitters, so it can turn off TVs at 40 meters away. And, um, and I, I might as well show you this, too. Uh, this one hasn't been field tested yet. I'm hoping to do that at Saturn tomorrow. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> what's that? Uh, I have to be awake first, so I don't know yet. Um, this one has eight emitters, and I'm 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 thinking that it'll go a hundred meters. So we'll, we'll find out. I'll, I'll let you know. So um, the cool thing with the TV Be Gone kit is it uses a, a little teeny Atmel, Atmel chip, and it's programmable with a programming port. And um, the, it's all open source, so you can uh, reprogram it. You can put your own codes in. You can you know, change it for stereos or DVDs or mute channel or add new codes as they come out. Uh, people are publishing them on the user forum and ladyada.net. And um, it's, it's fun. It's super, super easy to build. Um, so I've been doing that in my workshop uh, more recently. This just came out um, this fall. So, um, yeah, so you can build them here. I mean, I'll be doing workshops uh, whenever I'm awake. Find me in either the Hack Center or this faux bud space, like I said earlier. Um, or you can just download the stuff from my website cornfieldelectronics.com, and there's a Maker Fair button. That was the first time I did a workshop was at a Maker Fair. And uh, info is also on uh, Lady Ada's website uh, and user forums there. So um, uh, I think that's, that's pretty much it. So uh, yeah, any questions? <laughs> You can ask questions if you like. There's a mic here. Well, if not, find me, and if you want to try a brain machine, uh, just, just ask. <laughs> 